Genocide Denial, Wikipedia Audio Genocide denial is the attempt to deny or minimize statements of the scale and severity of an incidence of genocide. This denial of genocide is usually considered a form of illegitimate historical revisionism. The distinction between respectable academic historians and those of illegitimate historical revisionists rests on the techniques used to write such histories. Accuracy and revision are central to historical scholarship. As in any academic discipline, historians' papers are submitted to peer review. Instead of submitting their work to the challenges of peer review, illegitimate revisionists rewrite history to support an agenda, often political, using any number of techniques and rhetorical fallacies to obtain their results. The European Commission proposed a European Union-wide anti-racism law in 2001, which included an offence of genocide denial, but European Union states failed to agree on the balance between prohibiting racism and freedom of expression. After six years of wrangling a watered-down compromise was reached in 2007 giving states freedom to implement the legislation as they saw fit. Gregory H. Stanton, formerly of the U.S. State Department and the founder of Genocide Watch, lists denial as the final stage of genocide development. Writing on Genocide Denial in General Denial is the eighth stage that always follows a genocide. It is among the surest indicators of further genocidal massacres. The perpetrators of genocide dig up the mass graves, burn the bodies, try to cover up the evidence and intimidate the witnesses. They deny that they committed any crimes, and often blame what happened on the victims. George Orwell writes in Notes on Nationalism that It continues to destroy the victim group both psychologically and culturally, denies them of memory of murders of loved ones, it does not give them a chance to heal on all levels, with no transitional justice, there is no recognition of the crimes the perpetrators committed. This may create hatred or spark old tensions. The nationalist not only does not disapprove of atrocities committed by his own side, but he has a remarkable capacity for not even hearing about them. For quite six years the English admirers of Hitler contrived not to learn of the existence of Dachau and Buchenwald. And those who are loudest in denouncing the German concentration camps are often quite unaware, or only very dimly aware, that there are also concentration camps in Russia. Huge events like the Ukraine famine of 1933, involving the deaths of millions of people, have actually escaped the attention of the majority of English Russophiles. Many English people have heard almost nothing about the extermination of German and Polish Jews during the present war. Their own anti-Semitism has caused this vast crime to bounce off their consciousness. In nationalist thought there are facts which are both true and untrue, known and unknown. A known fact may be so unbearable that it is habitually pushed aside and not allowed to enter into logical processes, or on the other hand it may enter into every calculation and yet never be admitted as a fact, even in one's own mind. Israel Charney, Executive Director of the Institute on the Holocaust and Genocide in Israel, describes genocide denial by putting it into the following categories. 1. Innocence and Self-Righteousness The respondents claim that they only intend to ascertain the truth. Moreover, they do not believe that human beings could have been so evil as the descriptions of the genocide imply. Furthermore, even if many deaths took place a long time ago, it is important to put them aside now and forgive and forget. 2. Scientificism in the service of confusion Those who were involved in the perpetration can get away with the crime of genocide, 
Studies by genocide scholars have shown that denial of a past genocide is one of the indicators of future ones. The deniers within the country are three times more likely to help commit the crimes. In many countries where the government denies genocide, education on this event is non existent, or the children are told it is a myth. Writings on the truth of the event result in the persecution of the author and publisher. The position taken is seemingly an innocent one that we do not know enough to know what the facts of history were, and rather than condemning anyone we should await the ultimate decision of research. This is a manipulative misuse of the valued principle in science that facts must be proven before they are accepted in order to obfuscate facts that are indeed known, and to confuse the minds of fair-minded people who do not want to fall prey to myths and propaganda. The very purpose of science, which is to know, is invoked in order to justify a form of know-nothingness. 3. Practicality, Pragmatism, and Realpolitik Notable Genocide Denials by Individuals and Non-Government Organizations Here the claim is made that dealing with ancient history is impractical, it will not bring peace to the world in which we live today. One must be realistic and live through Realpolitik. 4. Idea Linkage Distortion and Time Sequence Confusion This is a dishonest linkage of different ideas, often out of time sequence, to excuse denials of the facts. Present needs, whether justified or not, are taken as a reasonable basis for censoring or changing the record of past history. 5. Indirection, Definitionalism, and Maddening these are responses which avoid the issue by failing to reply, or no less by going off on tangents about trivial details that avoid the essential issue whether genocide took place. The avoidance can also be done in a seductive manner of acknowledging that the issue should be discussed, but then it never is. Denial of the Srebrenica genocide takes many forms. The methods range from the brutal to the deceitful. Denial is present most strongly in political discourse, in the media, in the sphere of law, and in the educational system. The government of Pakistan explicitly denied that there was genocide. By their refusal to characterize the mass killings as genocide or to condemn and restrain the Pakistani government, the US and Chinese governments implied that they did not consider it so. Notable Genocide Denials by Governments Harms of Denial Similarly, in the wake of the 2013 Shabag protests against war criminals who were complicit in the genocide, English journalist Philip Hencher wrote, Literature The genocide is still too little known about in the West. It is, moreover, the subject of shocking degrees of denial among partisan polemicists and manipulative historians. Victims Perpetrators <laughs>